For more information on tutoring, personalized video solutions, or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, check out MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. Okay, so next up we've got the amino acids degraded to succinyl-CoA. How many amino acids have their carbon skeleton degraded directly to succinyl-CoA? There are four of them. Okay, one of them is methionine. A second is threonine. Third, isoleucine. And fourth, valine. So let's check that out. All right. So first things first is we'll start with this methionine, five carbons. We're going to turn it into SAM, S-adenosyl methionine, using the ATP and the methionine adenosyl transferase um, enzyme. And so we get SAM, which we've seen before as the uh, primary methyl group donor. And um, notice that I have five carbons here with this little asterisk. That's excluding the portion from the nucleotide or the nucleoside, right? The adenosine portion. I'm not counting any of these carbons on this thing because um, that's eventually just going to be just going to leave, as we'll see soon. So um, SAM is a methyl group donor, and that's what's going to happen here. It's going to donate this methyl group, that pink carbon, to some species without a methyl group using some methyl transferase enzyme and uh, that species will then have that methyl group and so the other four carbons are going to be here part of homocysteine uh, or s adenosyl homocysteine and we're going to get that homocysteine by hydrolyzing off that adenosine using a hydrolase and so that adenosine falls off and we get homocysteine okay um this should all i kind of rushed through that and the reason why is because um, at this point, I hope you have seen the video on one carbon transfers, especially the one on SAM, since, it's, since it applies here. Um, okay, so now we have homocysteine, four carbon um, amino acid. And we're going to add to that a serine, a three carbon amino acid, to get um, cystathionine. And that's going to be catalyzed by cystathionine beta synthase. So basically what happens is that we're adding the serine portion to this part of homocysteine. So we get it attached right here like this. So this is called cystathionine. Okay, that's seven carbon molecule. And then we're going to get rid of uh, this part as a cysteine. So it came in as a serine and we're just gonna fall off as a cysteine. So we're gonna lose those three carbons again. Uh, and in that process, that process is gonna be catalyzed by cystathionine gamma lyase and um, we'll also um, lose this amino group. And we're going to lose that amino group. And we will get alpha keto butyrate, okay. which looks like this. So, this portion of the molecule gives us the alpha keto butyrate. Okay. And we can get this alpha keto butyrate also from from threonine, okay? And this is actually the major pathway by which uh, threonine is degraded. Um, and going from threonine to alpha ketobutyrate, we're going to remove the amino group as well as um, uh, the HOH as, a, as we're gonna lose the a water. Um, and that is gonna be catalyzed by threonine dehydratase and we saw a dehydratase enzyme before. It was serine dehydratase. This enzyme acts um, in a pretty much the same way. In fact, it might even be the same enzyme. So the point is, though, that we end up with this alpha ketobutyrate, which we can add a coenzyme A to, as well as um, we add this coenzyme A to it and uh, get rid of this carboxyl group as a carbon dioxide. And we go from that four carbon molecule to a three carbon propanyl CoA. Now we can get that propanyl CoA from isoleucine. And we've actually seen this before, except I'm switching up the coloration of these carbons. Um, these two carbons, as we said before, end up in acetyl CoA after adding this coenzyme A. Um, this carbon or in the carboxyl group is going to leave as a carbon dioxide. And these three carbons end up 
in the propanyl CoA. And we also get some NADHs and FADH2s out of that. Okay. Um, and of course, that acetyl CoA can be oxidized. Now, uh, we can also get this propanyl CoA from valine. Uh, we're going to remove the uh, amino group just like we did over here with the uh, with the isoleucine in a transamination reaction. Okay. Um, and this carbon up here in the carboxyl group is going to leave as a carbon dioxide. And this carbon right here is going to leave as a carbon dioxide as well. So we're going to be left with those three orange carbons. Those three orange carbons are going to give propanyl CoA. Okay, so the point is that both of those amino acids give propanyl CoA. In fact, all of these amino acids, their carbons ended up in propanyl CoA. And the propanyl CoA, we can uh, carboxylate it, adding a carbon dioxide um, using ATP, using an enzyme, catalyzed by an enzyme called uh, propanyl CoA carboxylase. And this requires biotin. Before I go on, I forgot to put the name of the uh, the enzyme here that acts on alpha keto butyrate, that is alpha keto acid dehydrogenase. Okay. Um, this propanyl CoA is carboxylated by propanyl CoA carboxylase, very cleverly named here. Um, requires biotin as a coenzyme or a cofactor. Um, and of course, this is a one carbon transfer where the one carbon is in its most oxidized form as CO2 being attached right here to give D-methylmalonyl CoA. And this D-methylmalonyl CoA is turned into L-methylmalonyl CoA, where this is basically just um, the stereoisomer, right? Um, and that is done by methylmalonyl CoA racemase. Okay. And that L-methylmalonyl CoA is acted upon by methylmalonyl CoA mutase, which moves this carboxyl group from that carbon to this carbon to give, get that there, to make succinyl CoA. And cofactor in that reaction is coenzyme B12, which we've seen one other time in the videos on one carbon transfers. Okay, so this is the second of two reactions that, um, in which uh, coenzyme B12 is used. Okay. So that's how the amino acids are degraded to succinyl CoA. I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you and happy studying.